In this lesson, we are going to go through Module 2 Knowledge Check. Module 2 was all around configuring your Microsoft 365 tenant. Let's look at the first question. You are the enterprise administrator for Tailwind Traders, which up until last month was located in Paris, France. When Tailwind purchased its Microsoft 365 subscription two years ago, its organization profile listed the country region in which the country is headquartered as France. However, Tailwind recently moved its corporate headquarters to New York to change the company's headquarters for its Microsoft 365 subscription to United States. What must you do? The correct answer is sign up for a new account, choose the United States as desired country and region and purchase a new subscription because the country region where your organization is headquartered determines which services are available to you. The taxes and the billing currency and the location of Microsoft Data Center. Changing the location of the company headquarters requires that you sign up for a new account, choose the desired country or region and purchase a new subscription. Next question. You are the enterprise administrator for Contuso which has a Microsoft 365 Enterprise E3 subscription. The IT team wants to use Visio. While you are happy to accommodate the IT team, you want to do so while minimizing your cost. What should you do? The correct answer is purchase an add-on license for Visio Online. To provide this functionality while minimizing cost, you should purchase an add-on license for Visio Online. The next question. You are the enterprise administrator for Tailwind Traders, which up until last month was located in Paris, France, with Tailwind purchased its Microsoft 365 subscription two years ago. It sets the preferred language setting in its organizational profile to French. However, Tailwind recently moved its corporate headquarters to New York. Following the relocation, you changed the preferred language from French to English. In doing so, the language for all communications that are sent from Microsoft to Tailwind traders will now be in English. However, what aspect of your Microsoft 365 deployment will still be in French? So we talked about this in the previous lesson. So the correct answer is the language used by SharePoint Online will still be in French. If you change the preferred language after you sign up, the language used by SharePoint Online will remain the original language selected. It cannot be changed. Let's look at the next question. As the enterprise administrator for Contuso, you want to confirm your company's readiness to deploy Microsoft 365. You are especially interested in checking the company's DNS records and mail flow to test whether its mailing policies are working properly. Which of the following tools should you run to check Contuso's DNS record and mailing policies? The correct answer is Support and Recovery Assistant. The SARI tool will check DNS records and mail flow to test whether your mailing policies are working properly. Let's look at the next question. As the enterprise administrator for Contuso, you are configuring Contuso's Microsoft 365 tenant. Your plan is to provision and manage your user accounts by synchronizing Microsoft 365 with Contuso's on-prem Active Directory. What tool can you use to synchronize on-prem Active Directory objects with Azure AD in Microsoft 365? The correct answer is Azure AD Connect. Azure AD Connect synchronizes on-prem Active Directory objects with Azure AD in Microsoft 365. Next question. You are the enterprise administrator for Tailspin Toys. When a member of the sales team recently left the company, you removed the Office 365 E3 license from the user's Microsoft 365 account. What will happen to any service data associated with that user? The correct answer is any service data associated with that user is soft deleted. 
but you have a 30 day grace period in which you can recover the data before it gets permanently deleted. When you remove the license from any of your users, any service data that is associated with that user is soft deleted. You have a 30 day grace period in which you can recover that data. But after the grace period, the data is not recoverable. Next question. You are the enterprise administrator for Tailspin Toys, which has a Microsoft 365 Enterprise E3 subscription. When a member of the accounting department recently left the company, you deleted the user account. What will happen to the user's Microsoft 365 license? The license for that user becomes available and can be assigned to another user. So when you delete a user account, the user license becomes available to be assigned to any other users within your organization. Next question. As the enterprise administrator for Fabricum, you are planning its migration to Microsoft 365. You plan to authenticate all of Fabricum's users in Azure Active Directory. In doing so, you want the hassle of your user's password replicated between Fabricum's on-premises environment and Microsoft 365. Which type of identity should you use? The correct answer is synchronized identity. Synchronized identities are authenticated in Azure Active Directory using hashes of user passwords that are synchronized between the on-premises environment and Microsoft 365. Next question. You are the enterprise administrator for Contoso. You are planning to set up some groups in your Microsoft 365 tenant. You want to create a group that enables your manufacturing team members to collaborate with one another. The group will provide them a shared workspace for email, conversations, files, and calendar events. What type of group should you create? The correct answer is Microsoft 365 group. A Microsoft 365 group is similar to a distribution group in that it has its own mailbox and its members receive email messages that are sent to the group. However, it differs from distribution groups in that it allows teams to collaborate by providing them a shared workspace for email, conversations, files, and calendar events. Next question. You are the enterprise administrator for Contoso. After creating a security group in Microsoft 365 that is synchronized with your on-premises Active Directory, you now want to edit the group. Which of the following tools should you use to edit the group? The correct answer is local Active Directory management tools. Security groups that are synchronized with your on-premises Active Directory can only be modified using the local Active Directory management tools. Next question. When you create a site collection in SharePoint Online, which SharePoint Online groups are automatically created for that site collection? Correct answer is the default SharePoint Online groups that are created depend on the site template that used to create the site. Next question. As the enterprise administrator for Contoso, you are planning to set up some groups in your Microsoft 365 tenant. You want to create a dynamic distribution group. The recipients in this group will be recalculated every time you send a message that's based on filters and conditions that you define. Which of the following tools should you use to create the group? Correct answer is Exchange Admin Center. A dynamic distribution group must be created in the Exchange Admin Center. Next question. As the enterprise administrator for Tailspin Toys, you are planning a Microsoft 365 deployment. You want to add a new custom domain where the internal DNS zone and external DNS zone have the same name. And you want to design a DNS solution for the new domain that enables Microsoft 365 connectivity and meets this DNS requirement. What should you do? The correct answer is 
configure split brain DNS. Split brain DNS is a configuration in which the internal and external DNS environments provide different IP addresses to request for the same host name, depending on which server is used for name resolution. Next question. As the enterprise administrator for Contoso, you manage the company's Microsoft 365 tenant. You must add a DNS record for Exchange Online that will be based by Outlook clients to locate the auto discover service in Microsoft 365. Which DNS record type should you create? The correct answer is CNAME. Outlook clients use the record to locate the auto discover service in Microsoft 365. Next question. As the enterprise administrator for Contoso, you manage the company's Microsoft 365 tenant. You have a custom domain that you want to add to Microsoft 365. However, because the IT team had several key members quit over the past year, you are not sure if one of these former employees registered the domain using the personal information. How can you find out who registered the domain? The correct answer is check the who is record for the domain by using the internet who is register. Next question. Fabricum has a Microsoft 365 business premium subscription. The company recently purchased a new subsidiary that will be named Fabricum Residences. As Fabricum's enterprise administrator, you want to add a custom domain titled fabricumresidence.com for the new subsidiary. You also want to register a subdomain titled content.fabricumresidence.com that will be under the fabricumresidences.com root domain. What should you do to add these two domains to your Microsoft 365 Business Premium subscription? The correct answer is register the root domain first and then register the subdomain. Root domains must be added before subdomains. So fabricumresidence.com must be registered before you add content.fabricumresidence.com. Next question. Outlook and other office related clients can use which of the following features to automatically locate services in Microsoft 365? The correct answer is auto discover. Microsoft Outlook automatically locates services in Microsoft 365 by using auto discover. For example, auto discover automatically configures Outlook to connect to Exchange Online without the need to manually configure user connection settings. Next question. Microsoft 365 clients can connect to services such as Exchange Online and SharePoint Online. Each service contains a feature that clients use to make these connections. Which of the following features is it that enables these connections? The correct answer is Microsoft 365 endpoints. Microsoft 365 services contain multiple endpoints through which client connect to services such as Exchange Online and SharePoint Online. IPv4 and IPv6 addresses ranges are fully qualified domain names and properties included in each endpoint including ports, URLs, IPv4 and IPv6 address ranges. However, it's the endpoints themselves that clients use to connect to services such as Exchange Online and SharePoint Online. Next question. Lucerne Publishing is starting to experience connectivity issues in its Microsoft 365 deployment. The problems begin after it's migrated its user mailboxes to Microsoft 365. The company has experienced Outlook installation and activation issues and connectivity issues with OneDrive for Business. And Lucerne's enterprise administrator, you want to deploy a diagnostic tool to help identify and resolve these issues. You would also like a tool that generates a log file containing test results. Based on this information, which of the following tools should you use? The correct answer is Microsoft 365 Support and Recovery Assistant. Microsoft 365 Support and Recovery Assistant tool lets users run tests to resolve a variety of problems. 
These problems include Outlook installation and activation issues and issues that occur when you make a network connection in Microsoft Dynamics 365 or OneDrive for Business. Next question. Which of the following DNS record types must be created so that Outlook clients can use auto-discover processes to connect to Exchange Online? The correct answer is CNAME. Based on an Outlook client email address information and CNAME record on the internet located DNS, the client locates the auto-discover service in Microsoft 365. The auto discover process then automatically connects Outlook to Exchange Online. Next question. As the enterprise administrator for Contoso, you want to implement a protocol that connects Outlook to Microsoft 365. And you are searching for a protocol that's designed for modern networks and connectivity over the internet. Which of the following protocols should you use? The correct answer is MAPI and HTTP. MAPI over HTTP is the newest and most modern protocol. It's better designed for modern networks and connectivity over the internet than RPC HTTP or RPC TCP. Next question. As the enterprise administrator for Fabricum, you are planning the company's migration to Microsoft 365. To help you with this process, you are considering using Microsoft FastTrack service. You know that the FastTrack, Microsoft provides Fabricum with personalized assistance. However, you are not sure how long the service will be available and how long is the FastTrack available to a customer. The correct answer is FastTrack provides personalized assistance as long as the customer subscription is active. Next question. As the enterprise administrator for Fabricum, you are planning the company's migration to Microsoft 365. To help with this process, you want to use Microsoft FastTrack service. Specifically, you want to use FastTrack's data migration service to move data and email from your on-premises file server to Microsoft 365. To do so, you must ensure that Fabricum purchases enough licenses to qualify for the fast track data migration service. How many licenses should Fabricum purchase? The correct answer is 500. Customers with 150 plus seats can request assistance from fast track specialist to support their Microsoft 365 cloud deployment and adoption. However, to qualify for fast track data migration service, customers must purchase at least 500 licenses. For customers with 500 plus seeds, FastTrack can perform data email migrations for you, which frees up your time for you to deploy more products at one time. Next question. As the enterprise administrator for Fabricum, you are planning the company's migration to Microsoft 365. To help with this process, you want to use Microsoft FastTrack service. However, you soon discover that even with the FastTrack service, Fabricum will still be responsible for completing various aspects of your project. Which of the following steps will Fabricum be responsible for completing? The correct answer is create a support plan for migration and outline successful scenarios for the organization. The customer is responsible for completing these tasks during the assessment phase. All right, so that concluded this lesson. In the next lesson, we're going to learn about configuring administrative roles in Microsoft 365. I will see you on the next one. Until then, take care.